Hey everyone, George here, and welcome back to The Art of Water. So, you know, sometimes in this hobby we think we have everything under control, and uh, we find out very quickly that we don't. Uh, if you've been following the channel over the last couple of months, you know that I've been planning on this uh, uh, shipment of discus fish that were coming in, and how excited I was about getting this new... Uh, beautiful tank to put them in and uh, so on and so forth but I got to tell you there are times in this hobby when you think you have things under control and you have absolutely no control whatsoever we're going to talk about that a little bit when we come back hang in there with me we'll be right back So if you take a look behind me here, you'll get some indication that uh, things are not normal around here at all. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this and make this a hugely long video. But I think it's really important that we talk about a couple of things here. Uh, number one, I've had to use this tank as a quarantine tank in an emergency situation. I really didn't want to do that because this is one of my display tanks. and. Uh, uh, well, you can have a quarantine tank or you can have two quarantine tanks and you can end up in a situation where you need a third and a fourth. So it has been a crazy, crazy seven days. And what I want to talk about a little bit is sort of uh, lay out to you kind of what's happened here over the last few days. As you can see, I'm using this as a quarantine tank. There is an air stone running in here because I do have the temperatures in this tank for two small discus who are hiding right now uh, just simply because they're wild discus and they're really not used to what's going on. Uh, they are eating, uh, but it has been a major ordeal up to this point. The last couple of days have just started to normalize but uh, I've had to put this up to about 89 to 90 degrees uh, because of some problems with some parasites that these fish had and also uh, some uh, fungal issues uh, that they also developed in the shipping. Now what happened here is I was told that these fish were going to arrive at my house on Wednesday of last week. I was not expecting them uh, to come before that. And uh, I got a call uh, from UPS because this was a contact only situation when they delivered this. This is what I requested because these were being flown in and they were a special delivery. I asked that the UPS driver uh, make sure that someone was home and call ahead to make sure before they delivered these fish uh, that we had some idea of about when they were gonna arrive and that somebody would be here during a certain window of time to receive them so we can get them out of the box and get them started in the quarantine situation. Well. I got a call on Wednesday from the exporter uh, and uh, the importer uh, regarding the shipment saying that it was behind, that they were not going to arrive until uh, Friday. And uh, they said that they had a little problem with the shipping and things had gotten a little bit messed up with the flight on these and the problems started there. Um, I was at my son's house uh, working on a project with his tank when I saw on my camera in my house that there was a UPS guy carrying a box like a football. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like a football up to the front porch of my house and I thought I'm not expecting any packages. What could that possibly be? The only thing I knew that was coming from UPS 
were these fish. But the bottom line is, is I wasn't expecting them until the next day. So I was concerned enough. I wasn't that far from my home. I was about 30 miles and I drove it, got to the house. And uh, as you can see from some of the footage here, uh, it was a disaster. These uh, fish were set on my porch. The doorbell was never rang. It was never any uh, warning that these fish were coming. Uh, they were simply set on my porch and the box was soaking wet. When I got home, I found the box on the front porch soaking wet. Uh, all the cardboard was just peeling away from it. It had been uh, water leaking out of this thing for a while. Why someone didn't notice that, I don't know. It clearly said perishable on there. The problem that I have is it didn't say perishable live tropical fish or something of that nature that would give UPS or uh, the people at American Airlines, uh, uh, or actually I think it was Southwest Airlines, uh, an opportunity to see that there was a problem with this shipment and uh, it just got it totally ignored. So, you know, I quickly realized what the problem was and I got the fish inside. And, uh, well, there's a series of video that you're gonna see next here that kind of goes through that. At the same time, I was supposed to receive my larger aquarium, my 75 gallon, that ultimately all of these fish are going to end up in and uh, that was supposedly delayed as well. Uh, and that was fine. Um, I, I was intending on putting these fish into quarantine anyway and setting that tank up to uh, be ready for these fish in a few weeks. The problem is that I never expected that while I was standing on my porch taking care of this mess that arrived at my house as far as these discus fish. Here comes a truck up to my driveway and the tank is here. I had to leave everything where it was, go sign for this thing, have this guy bring it in on a pallet into my garage and set it down and just basically accept this thing without even taking a look really thoroughly as to whether or not the thing was in good condition. Thank God it was. So, you know, the communication on the delivery of the tank was also call first, make sure someone's home so that you don't have to come back or you don't end up leaving this thing in front of my house. Now, as I, it turns out, they would have never done that anyway because it was, you had to sign for it basically. Well, I was not ready for this thing at all. Uh, in the meantime, I've got fish inside that are still in bags that are leaking. And uh, well, the rest of this video is going to tell you the story about how all of that unfolded. And uh, so hang in there with me and just kind of follow along because it's very interesting. It really is going to answer some questions about how fish are shipped, who ships them, who the carriers are that are bringing these to you as to whether or not they're paying attention or even if the people that are shipping them are doing a good job of either packing them correctly or making sure that the companies that are doing the shipping uh, are aware of what's in these boxes and how they're handled. It's so, it's so mind boggling to me, uh, especially when you pay a tremendous amount of money for fish that you, you expect that they're, they're going to be fine and you don't have any indications that it's not going to be. But anyways, like I said, hang in there with me and we will watch some video here as to how all of this unfolded and you will get a better idea of the craziness that has gone on here for the last week. So hang in there with me and we'll be right back. So as you can see, this is the condition the box was in when I received it. It was totally soaking wet all the way through on the bottom and the sides. And uh, even the top part of the box was wet. Um, it really was not marked well. Um, 
that that's on the shipper but uh, I don't know why they don't put on their live tropical fish look at the bags on the inside soaking wet um, the lid on this thing was just falling apart as you can see it just said basically perishable uh, on there nothing about tropical fish actually this is one of the sides of the box this is not the, the lid but um, you can see here that these guys were laying on their sides for a while. I was concerned about that at first, but uh, knowing a little bit about discus when they fly uh, from one place to another, they will do that because of the pressure uh, that's in the bag. They need to adjust to that uh, in their new environment. So sometimes they will lay over on their sides. That's nothing to be concerned about as far as them dying or anything like that but uh, you do need to keep an eye on that. If it continues for a long period of time, then you probably do have a problem on your hands, but this is normal. Uh, it's not something to get all that concerned about. And uh, again, uh, this guy did this for a while. I was a little concerned about him, but I read that sometimes this can go on for three hours and I really thought this guy was gonna be in the worst shape. Uh, and it was really other ones that developed problems this guy as you can see at the end of this video did rather well um, he finally got up and, and got around and uh, he's doing really well right now and so are several others but uh, you know we do have uh, some others that are still in quarantine now one of the things that uh, you want to make sure is to keep the temperature high uh, I think on this one here, we ran it around 86 degrees. Um, yeah, I think it was stable right at around 86 to 88 degrees, somewhere in there. And uh, then uh, these guys here are still in quarantine in these buckets uh, because I ran out of space. I've just got every quarantine tank being used right now. Uh, did not expect these guys, as I said. And... Uh, Anyways, the quarantined uh, fish are on the antibacterials and they're also on uh, an antifungal. Now, these are two medications that I'm using, Canaplex and Paragard. I don't want you to use these together unless you absolutely have to because it's not a good idea. You can use Icex with the Canaplex. I have done that and fish have done well, but be extremely careful uh, in doing that. So what I want to talk about is uh, the condition in which I receive these fish. And as I said, uh, without going into more detail about it, the box was leaking and you know these there was obviously some problems. My biggest fear was that when I opened the box, uh, the water was going to be uh, out of these bags and these fish were just going to be dead. And uh, it wasn't exactly that way, but I'll tell you, it was... It was crazy. It was really crazy. It, it, it happened so fast and I had to go so fast to get these fish into a situation where um, they were out of those bags and into tanks that I had to, you know, get rid of all protocols for quarantining altogether and just sort of throw it out the window. Basically, uh, one bag was fine. And the other bag had been uh, somehow cut to the point where there was not enough water in there for the fish to fully be submerged. So they were literally mouthing at the top of this thing and then going back down and then coming back up and it smelled just awful. So you knew that there was urine and feces in there and the ammonia and uh, everything was just off the chart. So I paid attention to those fish obviously as quickly as I could. I uh, ended up taking some water in five gallon pails and taking it directly from my uh, main tank for my discus uh, display downstairs. And knowing that the water parameters were perfect in that tank, it was the best water I could think of. I drained five gallons out of that and got the fish basically in those by just taking them out by hand and just gently setting them in there and uh, of course discus if you've ever gotten discus before if they've been on a flight what happens to them is kind of like the bends when we are 
out scuba diving, they basically will go to the bottom and they will lay flat on their sides. That is very normal. But what was not normal is that these fish were sitting in ammonia with almost no water for I don't know how long. I don't know if it uh, started out that way with the, the shipper or if it uh, started in the process of the shipping on the airlines or with UPS, I have no idea. I'm still working on that. We're trying to get this figured out. And uh, I gotta tell you, it, it, it was a real, real heartbreaking thing to watch because these fish were struggling so hard to just survive coming out of these bags. And uh, uh, I did get them in the pails. Uh, as you can see from the footage that I'm going to show here, uh, I had to make a setup where I put a digital uh, heater in there as well as an air stone and sort of made a quarantine tank or at least a tank where they could survive and try to come around out of water that I knew was good, like I said, out of my main aquarium. So that's basically what I did. But I mean, these fish were... I, I, if it would have been another couple of hours, there's no way that these fish would have survived because the water was so low in that one bag that it just was not survivable uh, if it had gone on any longer. Um, and I kind of knew this. Now, I don't buy fish online very often. It's been a couple of times and every single time has been a bad experience basically and uh, this was no different this was probably the worst experience I've probably ever had I don't know if it starts with the with the people that I bought the fish from uh, regarding their uh, packing because they did put a heater in there to make sure that these fish were warm a heat pack I should say uh, it looks like they triple bagged them and it looks like they put a lot of cushion around the uh, uh, little uh, container that they were in, which was a styrofoam thing, very typical. Uh, if you get fish, you know this. And uh, so everything seemed pretty normal about it. The only thing I would tell you is uh, dates were all messed up. Uh, I don't know if these people tried to get these things out the door uh, with uh, concern that, uh, you know, I was supposed to get them on a certain date. And uh, they told me that they were coming on Friday. They ended up coming on Thursday, a day sooner. I wasn't home. Uh, none of the protocols were followed. So we'll talk about that in another video about whether or not uh, buying fish online and uh, knowing who you're getting them from or buying them locally is a better thing. Now I'm finding out that I could have got pretty much the same discus fish 100 miles from me driving, uh, but I didn't know that. I really didn't know that until I started checking around with people who were specialists at Wild Discus who could give me some information on what I needed to do to save these fish. And I ran into some really great people in uh, Portland, Oregon, which is to the south of me about 132 miles. And I found a uh, a store down there that sells tons of wild discus, uh, four or five varieties of them. And, uh, you know, it probably would have been in my best interest to go there and get these fish from them because they'd already been quarantined, they were already eating, they were already, uh, you know, medicated if there was any issues with them. And I probably should have went that route, but live and learn. It's, it's just one of those things. Um, I'm not saying don't ever buy fish online because most of you have probably had pretty good experiences with that. As I said, uh, the people that I was dealing with here came recommended to me. Uh, I read the reviews. Of course, there's, there's some people that write reviews and are ticked off because they've had, well, experiences like I had. And uh, so... You know, it, it's it's natural to get a review like that, but um, I don't know if they cherry pick the reviews and put them on there or what. But uh, you know, you could see that there were some really really ugly reviews, and there were 50 fantastic reviews. So you know, I mean, I could do that if I had a website too. I could sort of 
you know, receive any kind of, uh, of review on my website and deny it because of what they do uh, is they basically filter these things and go through them and select which ones they like and which ones they don't like or they know that every experience isn't going to be perfect so they put up a few bad ones that aren't really terribly bad but somebody's disgruntled about oh you didn't send this with it and I had to wait two weeks to get this after I was supposed to get the whole shipment together you know those kind of things so anyways we're going to watch some more of this footage as to uh, some of the things that went on here with this and uh, I hope you'll hang in there with me because it is important if you ever have a situation like this. None of these fish are dead at this point. There is one, um, I'll be surprised if he makes it and or she uh, if they make it, uh, but the bottom line is that uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can to care for that fish and to uh, try to make things sustainable for him or her. And, uh, you know, I don't know how that's going to turn out. That's, that's something for another day. But anyways, uh, we'll watch some more of this video and then we'll come back in and we'll close out this, uh, uh, this vlog with a little bit of uh, a sort of a summation of my experience with all of this and what I think uh, you should do if you are in a situation where you're buying expensive fish like this online and uh, some of the things that you might want to consider before you do that. So anyways, we'll be right back. So hang in there with me and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finish this video up with some uh, updated information basically on what's going on with these fish and also some information that I think is very useful. So hang in there with me and we'll be right back. So to summarize this whole experience, let me tell you this. This has been a seven day uh, situation where I wouldn't wish this on anyone because you're trying to save fish that are just beautiful creatures, number one. That's the most important thing is saving their lives and and, and that sort of thing. But the amount of panicking that goes on um, really throws you into disarray. Uh, what I would tell you from my experience with this whole thing is this. Make sure that you are dealing with people that you know or people that at least somebody that you know in the hobby has purchased from and they can reflect back on their experience and tell you a little bit about what to expect from that uh, uh, that supplier. Now, um, I don't know where the blame belongs here. I think it's a little bit of each. I think number one, the, the packaging uh, had to be uh, a problem from the get-go on uh, the one bag and then I think the handling of the package by the airlines and also UPS were probably not very good either and I, I know for a fact that the way the guy was carrying this box up my driveway he had no concern about what was inside this thing. I don't even think he knew to be honest with you that there were live fish in there. Also said it's perishable on there. That could mean there's fruit, flowers, anything in there. It, it had no indication that there were live tropical fish in there. That's the first thing. That's something that every uh, shipper should put on there so uh, that an airlines or UPS or whatever carrier you're using, FedEx, uh, any of these people will know that they're dealing with live creatures in these boxes and that they need to have special care. So I don't want to take a ton of more time on this because this is a long enough video as it is, but I want you to really understand that uh, when you're buying things online, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Uh, you can get information from somebody about their experience with this same supplier and your experience can be something completely different. Again, I don't want to blame that supplier. Uh, you know, solely for being responsible for this, but the way this thing was packed, there was something about that bag that was not packed correctly because 
regardless of whether the fish were knocked around and things were rough getting here, uh, the two things that the supplier did not do is mark the boxes correctly, that there were live fish in there and that uh, they were fragile and whatever. Perishable just doesn't really, to me, tell somebody who's handling these that they gotta be a little bit more careful. So let's just say, regardless of whether they were careful or not, as long as there were water in there, the fish probably would have been okay. The problem had to have started with the supplier and the way they packed them. So be careful about that. Talk to your supplier about how they pack things, how they ship them, and uh, get some really good information on that before you buy fish online. Now, I will not buy fish online again. This is, I'm done with that. I am just done with that. Uh, unless, um, you know, I open a pet store or something like that and I have no choice but to do it that way. I don't have any doubt in my mind that I will never ever buy fish online again. Um, because I'm finding that I could have got the same fish, like I said, just 130 miles to the south of me, and it would have been worth the drive. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me today. Please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and also leave your comments down below, because this is an interesting subject. I want to get your feedback on your experiences with uh, ship that you, uh, shipments of fish that you may have received and the kind of condition that they were in whether you've had good experiences or bad experiences because it's interesting to sort of uh, put all this together and kind of figure out you know why this kind of stuff happens so uh, do leave your comments down below and I'm not going to mention the supplier I mentioned UPS because I don't really care about those guys uh, there's there's a or FedEx to be honest with you there's just a ton of stuff that I buy through the mail that comes broken or whatever uh, we will do a separate video on the tank there will be some footage in this video about that and uh, the uh, receiving of that tank and where it sits right now and when I will be putting that together and uh, videoing the escaping of that tank and setting it up so ultimately all of these discus fish can go in that tank right over here uh, where I can look at them anytime I want to while I'm working and whatever. I just thought this was the perfect place for them. I had a perfect spot for the size of tank that I wanted and uh, just thought I would use it. So anyways, thank you for joining me today. Um, please hit that bell up at the top there so that you know of any new videos that I have coming out. That gives you an opportunity to view those videos first and uh, I really appreciate that. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. That is it for now and we will see you on the next one. Until then, take care and uh, be careful out there with, with some of the stuff that goes on in, in uh, importing fish, uh, imported fish and buying from suppliers that you don't know very well. Anyways, thank you for joining me and we will see you on the next one. So this is the large tank that we were talking about. This is setting off to the side in a room next to my fish tank room, and we will do a separate video about that. So look forward to that video soon.